This video is my new parkrun PB video. It's also a love letter to parkruns. This video is about both aspects. Four weeks ago now, I made a video about my 2023 parkrun PB attempt. Last January, a whole year ago now, I made a 2023 New Year's resolution video. And one of the targets in that video that I set myself was to run a park run in under 30 minutes. That video I made exactly a year ago now. Unbelievable how fast time flies when you're having fun. But the sub 30 minute 5K is a really good challenge for me. Running 5K over a park run terrain in under 30 minutes is my Everest at the moment. When I've done it, I'll find my new Everest. Two years ago, I couldn't run a 5K without stopping, let alone at any kind of decent pace. I love park runs. These videos I make about park runs are all mini love letters to park runs. The best thing about park runs are their obvious USPs and the three biggest unique selling points they have, according to me, are that they are completely free of charge. They're absolutely everywhere and they're completely non-judgmental. All three of these benefits make park runs completely accessible to all. These are the reasons I started running them in the first place and why I get so motivated by them every time I run one. I enjoy being surrounded by all the different types of people, from experienced runners to absolute beginners. They're all there, and they're all there to make changes and improve their physical and mental health. And secretly, I get hugely motivated by those at the back of the pack running, jeffing and walking their way to better well-being. Everyone has to start somewhere, and park runs are great for this. They're a great starting point. They're perfect if you're out to get running for the first time or even the 10th time. If you're slow, it doesn't matter as there will be someone slower to run with or walk with. And if you're fast, then there's always someone faster than you to try and be. And especially if you're competitive like me. And of course, there is everything in between, which is probably where I am. Anyway, I could talk about how much I appreciate park runs and how great they are for all runners, including beginners. But this video isn't about necessarily just how great park runs are and is a part of this video, which is why I'm making it. But it's also about my sub 30 minute park run attempt. So last January, I set myself a sub 30 minute park run target. Sub 30 minutes is an invisible barrier. Most runners, especially park runners, want to pass as soon as they start running for the first time. And sub 30 minutes is not a time anyone with minimal cardio ability can just wake up and run easily. And as a heavy runner, continually looking to get stronger and better at running while simultaneously getting lighter, going from my previous 5K PB of 33 minutes to sub 30 was a great target, shaving three minutes off, and one that felt completely achievable and unobtainable all at the same time. It was a really hard challenge that I needed and really wanted to overcome, and it held huge value to me. I also love park runs because you get the buzz of an official running event with finish times, a start line, a finish line, etc. without that run writing off the rest of your day like other long running events sometimes do. You get your running fix as well as being able to go shopping with the family afterwards and not having to walk like John Wayne. Anyway, a few weeks ago, I made a video where I officially went for my new target of a sub 30 minute park run. And in a second, you will see why sprinting for a finish line is so important. <sighs> I turned up at my favorite park run location and I went for it. And I ran a 29 minute, 59 second park run time. That video is on my channel, link is in the description. Because of my aim for the stars mentality, I achieved an official park run result of, are you ready for this? 29 minutes and 59 seconds. It was unbelievable that I did it, but with only one second to spare. I did run a sub 30 minute park run, but only by one second. I was absolutely over the moon that I had achieved my 2023 
New Year's resolution. After the run, when my heart rate had dropped and I had time to reflect, I realized that I had held back in the last couple of kilometers. Not a lot, but I could have held on for a slightly faster effort. I realized that even with a decent sprint finish, like I attempted, I felt like I could have pushed harder, especially in that last kilometer, meaning that I felt like I had another park run PB attempt left in me. It's that awful feeling where you achieve what you want to achieve, and then you think, could I have done slightly better? That's exactly what I was thinking. So two weeks ago now, on Christmas Eve Eve, so the 23rd of December, I forced my reluctant two teenage daughters to a park run, along with my very supportive but annoyingly naturally fit partner, and we went for it again. This time, I had my family to hopefully pace me. The last time I ran with my family was, was last Christmas. So it's now become a bit of a family tradition to run park runs on Christmas Eve with teenage enthusiasm. <laughs> Now, they're both very reluctant to appear on camera as they're teenagers, but they tried really hard. So Christmas Saturday park run, and I'm here. Where's she gone? So we turn up at this really, really busy park run. I love it, full of enthusiastic and hopeful runners of all types. It was brilliant and I had one goal, sub 29 minutes and 59 seconds. I set myself a 27 minute target and if I could hold a 524 pace per kilometer, that would get me my, not only my sub 30 minutes, but it would get me 27 minutes, which was smashing my target. I'm not sure how many times in this video I'm gonna say sub 30 minutes, but it's gonna be a lot. All right, they don't wanna be in here, but I'm here with the fam. Here's Tracy. Hello. Now, I knew Maddie, my eldest, had no intentions of running at my pace. She already told me and said this to me before the run that she would run at a happy pace. And if she's happy, then I am happy. She's running with me in the same race and is, this is good enough for me. But my youngest, Scarlett, who is 14, said she wanted to try and pace me. And she wanted to pace me to success. She wanted to help me get my sub 30 minutes, which I really appreciate. So it's the annual Christmas park run. I've got to be honest with you, I really appreciated them all wanting to run with me, which was a big deal for them because it was giving up their whole morning to come and do something which was my thing and not necessarily theirs. So I really appreciate that. Considering this was both of their first runs this year, I was grateful that Scarlett wanted to try and keep up with me. She does a lot of other sporting activities and I was confident that her natural fitness level will carry her through. And as it's only 5K, I knew she had a higher enough cardio ability to carry her through as well. I wasn't worried about her keeling over or giving up halfway. Tracy, my partner, is awesome and her natural fitness level allowed her to run between us, me and Scarlett, and Maddie, who was having fun at the back running at her happy pace. Well, they, look, they mean business. Oh, <laughs> The race was on and Scarlett and I went for it. We shot off the line so fast, I had to slow to 5.24. At one point, within the first 500 metres, we were running a sub four minute kilometre pace. Good job. Not good for endurance. So we had to slow to 5.24 and we sustained that for another kilometre, which was phenomenal. We were absolutely flying and I felt fantastic. We pushed the first hill and then Scarlett hit her wall. She isn't used to pushing through the wall and wanted to walk. I stayed with her, held her hand and kept her running as much as I could at a much slower pace. We ran it together. It's important to me that she enjoys this run for what it is, a hard challenge to overcome, but not so hard that it puts her off running or running another park run for life. Okay, our pace. It's dropped off. We're not going to do a sub 30, but she's powering through, aren't you, Scotty? Give me five. She's doing such a good job. There's a bit of a beastie hill on this park run. So I think we're going to walk that, but we're doing well. And most importantly, we're having fun no, on Christmas not. Eve Eve. No. Having fun. No. She's doing so well. My wife and other daughter are back there somewhere. At least we're beating them, aren't we? Yeah. She absolutely smashed it. I said that she could stop whenever she wanted to, but she didn't want to stop, which was, you know, a great attitude to have. I said she could walk if she wanted to, and even though on occasion she did stop to walk, she very quickly started jogging again and kept pushing herself. This is a really nice downhill section here. 
where we can run a bit faster. So we're now doing a six minute kilometer pace downhill. But whatever happens today, Scarlett's gonna get her PB, aren't you? Because this is officially on paper, her first ever park run. The last one she did, well over a year ago, she didn't have a barcode for, so she didn't register. This one, she has got a barcode and we have registered. So we're gonna have a park run PB today. Come on, whatever you do, don't walk. She doesn't want me filming her. Don't walk then, keep jogging. She's doing awesome. She's doing so well. So that's one lap down. We've got one lap left to go. We're nearly at two and a half K. She's filming me, filming her. We've got the beast of a hill here and I'm gonna see if she's got it in her to run up it. I don't. Apparently she doesn't. We will see. I also kept shouting motivational things at her. Come on, don't walk. She's doing so well. She just does not run. She does a lot of sports and activities, but she doesn't run. And for the fact that she's done this with me, I'm so grateful that I'm able to do this with my family. Where the other two are, God knows. And afterwards, uh, she did say that she appreciated the support. Keep going. All right, I'll stop filming. Right, we've got a monster hill now. Come on, little steps, little steps. She didn't say anything to me at the time because she was so busy just focusing on what she needed to get done that I sounded like a crazed dad forcing his daughter to run against her will. And even though if you ask her now, that's what she'd say, I knew she had fun. What she did say was that she found it hard at the time, but she felt proud that she kept pushing and didn't quit. In a normal teenage matter of fact way, and this put a huge smile on my face. This feeling she got of overcoming her own personal hard challenge is why I run and why I wanted to run with her and my other elder daughter who was convulting her way around the course like Mary Poppins in that scene on the fairground horses. Oh riders, would you be so kind to let me pass? Certainly, ma'am. Thank you. Not at all, ma'am. They both had a small insight into why I love running so much and especially why I love park runs. You've absolutely smashed it. You've done more then 99% of everyone else is still sat in the sofa or lying in bed. There's only 1%, 0.1% of the population out right now running. And we're part of it. And we're part of it. She'd done a dad and left her bottle by a tree. So she didn't have to carry it for the first lap. That's it. We're still going. Come on, we're doing a 7.30 pace. 7.30 pace is great. Oh, we're gonna stop for a drink. Mm -hmm. Okay, having a drink. Ugh. Is there some tree in it? Yeah. <laughs> ready? Okay, we're not ready yet. Come on, we're losing the pace. People are overtaking us. Oh well. <laughs> what do you mean oh well? Come on, let's go. Let's go, go, go. Oh no! Look who it is, Scarlett! Look! He's caught us! Where's Maddie? Oh my God. Tracy was having fun running between us and our eldest who stubbornly refused to sprint or even break a sweat. But in her own way, I knew she enjoyed it and took pride from completing it in, in her own way, in her own stubborn, independent way. <laughs> right, we're gonna run as fast no, as we can. Listen, no. from that green sign, always sprint for a finish line. Got it. No, pass. Oh, and then we reached the last 400 meters. I told her we were going to sprint for the finish line. She said no, she didn't have it in her to sprint, which was absolutely fine. Ready? Are you ready? Come on. Come on. Come on. I went for it, and to her massive credit, she tried to keep up with me, and she tried to sprint. Because I had run the whole race in my zone one, I had loads of energy for the sprint. And because Scarlett had put absolutely everything she had into this race, running the whole way in her zone five, she was at a disadvantage, but she still went for it. She ran as hard as she could to keep up with me. And she later told me after the race that she didn't want the man next to her to beat her to the finish line. 
Even with a max heart rate exhaustion level, she was still as competitive as me. She is definitely my daughter. <laughs> Scarlett. I crossed the finish line in 33 minutes, looked over my shoulder just in time to see her stop only a few feet from the finish line. Thank you. Scarlett. And start to do that dreaded dry retching that we all get from pushing ourselves too hard in the moment. She eventually crossed the finish line in just under 35 minutes. If she stayed with me for another six feet and then collapsed after the finish line, she would have had a parkrun PB of 33 minutes. I was incredibly proud of both her and her older sister who very calmly and elegantly crossed the finish line in a little over 35 minutes. Well done, Mad. Go and get your barcode. Good job, girls. Good job. Give me five, Mad. Go and give it to the... You smashed it, come in. So proud of you. So proud of you. Well done. Good job, give me five. Well done, my girls. Jesus. It's like they've just run a marathon. And Tracy would have smashed it if she wasn't running between us and Maddie. But the most important thing here was that we all enjoyed the run as a family in our own way. That's it done. Park run. Finished. We did it in, well, my watch said 35 minutes. So. Oh, mine said 34. 34. We did it We did it in about 33, 34 minutes. Yeah, because I was after you and I was 34. Yeah. Smashed it. Smashed it. And that's with you stopping on the finish line to throw up. She doesn't like the camera. All right, we're done. It seems like a really sentimental thing to say, but us doing this park run together was more important to me than running a PB, just slightly, that I could complete this week, next week, or the week after. Doing this as a family is why I love park runs. It's probably one of the only events that's open to all capabilities and you can rock up with absolutely anyone, your family included, and someone can get something out of it. It's phenomenal. So having said all that, I still had time before the end of the year, because this was Christmas Eve Eve, to set my new park run PB of a sub 29 minute, 59 second park run. The best thing about the Christmas period is they don't just do park runs on Saturdays, they run them over quite a few of the bank holidays. So I had a look on the park run website and I saw that there was a local one running on the 30th of December. Unfortunately, my favorite one wasn't running, but I found a new local one, Colchester Castle, that was running on the 30th of December. Okay, I'm with Tracy. It is Saturday morning. Uh, the 30th of December. It is New Year's Eve Eve, day before New Year's Eve. I've uh, got two days left of 2023 and this is my second park run in two weeks. Two park runs on the trot. So normally we work Saturdays, which is why I don't normally get to do park runs. I love park runs, love doing them, don't we Tracy? We love yeah. doing them. Tracy's been forced to do park runs. <laughs> Um, her fitness always amazes me because she does zero running and then is able to keep up with me in a park run and makes it look easy and doesn't even break a sweat. Yeah, so today's challenge. Today. No, it's cold today. It's about five degrees at the moment. Luckily, there's no wind. Um, there's been wind all week. It had been raining all night and was still raining when we woke up on the 30th. So my two newly indoctrinated park run loving daughters decided one motivational park run per year was enough. So they stayed in bed. No children today. They refused to get out of bed, even though they'd promised me to come and help me at least film. Um, no children for the park run today. To be fair, it was absolutely chucking it down when I woke them up. So I'm going to start doing a warm up run in a minute. However, today's challenge. My park run PB, which I set two weeks ago, is 29 minutes, 59 seconds. I beat the sub 30 minute challenge by one second. So today I want to cement that. This is going to be my last chance to run a park run in God knows how long because we work Saturdays. And uh, even though I can do a 5k run with my watch, my Garmin watch, I want to set an official park run PB. So I'm going to aim for my 27 minute target, which is a 524 kilometer pace. I know I can't sustain that for 5k, but I'm going to aim to start with that. 
but I need to do a warm up run because I'm freezing. So on our own, Tracy and I rocked up at Colchester Castle Park Run on a very wet New Year's Eve Eve, so the 30th of December, not realizing how hilly this course really was. We parked up and I started my 30 minute warm up run. Tracy said she wasn't gonna do a warm up run as apparently 5K was enough running for one day. Today's venue is Colchester Castle Park Run. So this is, we've never done this before. Um, it doesn't look particularly hilly, but then- No, look at that up there. Oh yeah, that's bad. That looks very hilly. Yeah, okay, I take that back. There's a, there's a big old hill over in that direction. It was only during my warm up that I realized just how hilly this course really was. Okay, there was a meaty hill. I mean, steep. The steepest park run hill I've ever run up, which, Hills don't bother me, not bothered by hills, but hills affect PB time. And every second counts. There's Colchester Castle. And I had a slow realization that no PBs were being set today. I was gutted knowing no matter how hard I pushed, I was never gonna set a new PB on these steep steep heels. So instead of going for a PB, I changed my mindset and decided to go as hard as I could from the start, use it as a zone five workout and run for fun. Irrelevant of the time. Okay, three, two, one, go! So both Tracy and I got on the start line right at the front and we went for it. The crazy fast runners sped past us and we hurtled down the hill for the first time towards the first turn. <laughs> Tracy and I burst off the line as normal. She got a little in front of me, which was great. Things were looking good for both her and me at this point. I love it when I'm able to run with her. We had to run laps of the castle, which is at the top of the hill. And after each turn of the castle, we need to head right back down to the bottom of the hill. And we need to do this three times. When you run downhill on a loop, unfortunately, this means you need to run back up. Good morning, Filmer. Okay, that's 2K down. Now we're back uphill. Run uphill now. And this long hill with loads of turns in it back up to the castle was really, really steep. Okay, pace has dropped off a bit. Going downhill now though. What goes down must go up. There's some brutal climbs. This is a very hilly course. Oh my god, this, this is so hilly. Oh, come on. It's downhill right. So I've been a wimp. It's downhill. Come on. Hello mate. Still got it. So this route was a killer. The climbing felt relentless. My cardio was really, really put to the test. I ran the entire route in zone five, max effort, with my heart rate maxing out at 188. 190 is my absolute capacity, and I averaged 173 BPM. This was truly a max effort run. I hadn't run this hard in a long time. Even when I race on Zwift, my heart rate doesn't always get this high. I'm back. Now my target pace originally was 5.24 per kilometer and I ran the first two kilometers unbeknownst to me at 5.28, but with a long hill that I had to climb three times, my pace then dropped to 6.15 in kilometer three and four. Come on Tracy, just a K to go. Brutal hill. I tried really hard to keep filming, but all my energy was spent on trying to keep a faster pace. You know you're in zone five when you can't speak or even think about anything else other than just the pace. The hill on this course was a killer. It destroyed everything I was trying to achieve. Mind the bollard. Well, 
as I came around the castle for the third and final time, I looked at my watch for the first time in the run and I saw that I was seconds away from 30 minutes. I genuinely couldn't believe I was still on for a 30 minute finish time. And if I sprinted, I was possibly, quite possibly, still on for a sub 30 minute time by only seconds. But I had to sprint if I wanted to achieve this. I was convinced that my pace was so slow, I was miles off 30 minutes. To look at my watch and see I was only seconds off 30 minutes with my finish line in sight, this was an awesome feeling and gave me a big boost. I went for it, sprinting as hard as my maxed out heart rate allowed me to, and I crossed the line. I didn't feel I had more in me. I couldn't have run any harder or any faster. Unlike my last PB attempt, where I reflected and thought I could have pushed a bit more, I knew I was at absolute maximum in this run. And my time was, drum roll, I couldn't believe it. It was again exactly 29 minutes and 59 seconds with my Garmin watch backing this up. I had run exactly the same sub 30 minute time I had set only a few weeks previous. Now this 29 minutes and 59 seconds was a blessing and a curse. I'll come on to that in a second. Now I knew this course was tough and I had passed Tracy in the second kilometer. And when I finished, I watched Tracy come around the corner over four minutes behind me. She had really struggled with the hills. I shouted at her to sprint as she approached the finish line and she was not amused. She refused to make eye contact with me. She did not enjoy this cold, wet run up hills even at her own pace. Apparently, park runs are not fun in the winter, rain and up hills. <laughs> How do you feel? Can you breathe? <laughs> she done very well. Yep, got it. Got it? Yep, perfect. Thank you. Good job. Thanks very much. Anyway, there were loads of positives from this run, but two stuck out for me. Going back to what I was saying about this time being a blessing and a curse. Now, this was my second sub 30 minute park run. So this proved that the first one was not a fluke. So first off, hooray for me. But the second benefit and also probably a curse was that this finish time was on a course with a huge climb in it. And we had to climb that climb three times. It had significantly increased Tracy's park run finish time. And because of the climbing involved and the amount of effort I put into climbing these climbs, I knew that I could potentially have gone for a 28 minute time on a flat course. I reckon that these hills increased my finish time by two minutes. That's just me guessing and being optimistic probably. But I definitely think on a flat course, I would have smashed 30 minutes. We will have to wait and see. This might have to go into my New Year's resolution video, which is going to come out next week. I have loads of exciting new hard challenges from smaller fun ones like this Parkrun PB to some of the most audaciously hard challenges I think I will ever face in my entire life, all planned in for 2024. So first off, here's to a bigger and better 2024. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you see value in my channel and happy new year to you and your whole family. If you fancy running or even walking your first park run, then I've left a link in the description to help you find one near you. I'm a massive advocate and don't forget they don't cost a penny so they're completely free of charge. Good luck and I hope to see you in next week's New Year's resolution video. See you then.